Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The non-precision approaches that you used to fly several years ago have evolved a lot thanks to the constant descent approach profile via NavGNSS and RNPIR approaches. At the same time, the aircraft systems have been outstandingly improved to fly these approaches in a very accurate manner when using full managed guidance. With the improvement of approach design and aircraft system design, we also improve the Airbus SOP to fly non-precision approaches in an easiest way. I'm going to detail you an improvement that we have recently introduced in Airbus SOP regarding the use of APFD below minima for non-precision approaches flown in full managed guidance. You will see that keeping the APFD below minima when visual references are sufficient to continue the approach provide a lot of operational advantages. My presentation is divided into four parts. In the first part, we will review the previous procedure, which is based on the previous FMGS design and previous minimum use height of the AP. In the second part, I will explain you the design of the recent FMGS and the update of the minimum use height of the AP that we have introduced. In the third part, I will explain you the new procedure that we have introduced and the operational benefits that this procedure can bring. And finally, we will review the conditions of application of this new procedure. So let's start with the previous procedure. The previous procedure that was applicable to all FMS standards and all guidance modes requested to manually disconnect AP and FD at the latest at minimum if visual references are sufficient to continue the approach. So when reaching minimum, continue, announce, AP off, FD off, track FPA, bird select, runway track, check set. This procedure was based on the previous FMGS design when flying a non-precision approach using full managed guidance, final APP. The FMS standard was the FMS before release 1A. Here is the logic. If the aircraft reaches minimum minus 50 feet while flying in final APP, if the AP was not manually disengaged at minimum, there is an automatic AP disconnection at minimum minus 50 feet and a mode reversion from final APP to heading vertical speed. It means that the full managed guidance is lost at minimum minus 50 feet. However, the automatic AP disconnection should not happen if the FCOM procedure is followed because you have to switch off the AP at the latest at minimum. We also add a limitation in the FCOM and in the AFM that is called the minimum use height of the AP, MUH. As you can see, for straight in non-precision approach, the MUH of the AP is the applicable minimum. It means that as per this limitation, you are obliged to switch off the AP at the latest at minimum. So we have seen that the previous procedure requested to switch off AP and FD at the latest at minimum. And this procedure was based on the FMGS design with an automatic AP disconnection at minimum minus 50 feet and a minimum use height of the AP, which was equal to minimum. Let's now review the design of the recent FMGS, as well as the update of the MUH that we have introduced. 
on the new FMGS, so FMS2 after release 1A, when you fly an approach using the final APP mode, if you reach minimum minus 50 feet with final APP and AP FD engaged, the memo disconnect AP for landing is displayed on the FMA to remind you that you have to disconnect the AP because the autoland is not available in this case. The disconnect AP for landing memo depends on the EIS standards, so you will have it displayed on the latest EIS standards. If the AP is not manually disengaged at minimum, the AP will remain engaged at minimum minus 50 feet, and the final APP mode remain active down to the missed approach point. On switching the missed approach point, there is a mode reversion from final APP to heading vertical speed. It means that the full managed guidance is lost at the missed approach point. With the recent flight guidance system, you do not have any AP disconnection. It means that if you do not disconnect the AP, it will remain engaged down to the ground. But remember that Autoland is not available in this case. You have to switch off the AP. With the old FMFG standard, there is an automatic AP disconnection at the missed approach point. It has to be noticed that the equivalent guidance mode for the A350 is the APPDES mode, which is used to fly air nav RNP approaches, so the RNP AR approaches. Let's now have a look at the design of the FLS function. The FLS function is basically installed on A350 and A380 and is optional on A320 and A330. The FLS enables to fly non-precision approaches with the same interface as you have on an ILS approach. The associated guidance modes are F-Lock and F-Glide Slope. So you, when you fly a non-precision approach using the FLS function, with F-Lock, F-Glide Slope mode engaged. Once the aircraft reaches minimum minus 50 feet or 100 feet radio altimeter for A350, the memo disconnect AP for landing is displayed on the FMA. If the AP was not manually disengaged at minimum, the AP will remain engaged and the F-Lock, F-Glide Slope mode will remain engaged down to the ground. At the map, there is no automatic AP disconnection, so the AP remains engaged, and F-Lock, F-Glide Slope mode remains engaged as well. In addition to this new design of FMS, we have also recently updated the minimum use height of the AP in the FCOM and in the AFM. Now, the minimum use height of the AP for approaches flown using the FLS function is 200 feet above ground level. In non-precision approach using final APP, or nav FPA, nav vertical speed, track FPA, heading vertical speed, this MUH is equal to 250 feet above ground level. It means that we have now a fixed value of the MUH in the documentation. So we have seen that with the design of the recent FMGS, there is no more automatic AP disconnection at minimum minus 50 feet. And the full managed guidance remains available down to the missed approach point with final APP and down to the ground with the FLS function. We have seen also that we have updated the minimum use height of the AP, meaning that we do not have any more a limitation to switch off the AP at minimum. 
based on this improvement of system design and of this limitation in uh, the documentation we have proposed a new procedure that I'm going to date to detail you now this new procedure is applicable to final APP mode for FMS post release one a and APP death mode when you fly an approach using final APP or APP death for a 350 when you reach minimum, if visual references are sufficient, continue announce. It is reminded that below minimum, the visual references must be the primary references until landing. Then, at the latest, at the missed approach point, you will have to switch off the AP. Why at the latest, at the missed approach point? Because at the missed approach point, that the mode reversion from final APP to heading vertical speed or from APP death to heading vertical speed. There's a note also to remind you that there is a minimum use height of the AP. So we'll have to switch off the AP at the latest at the missed approach point or the minimum use height of the AP whichever occurs first. Then you can keep the FD or decide to switch them off depending on conditions that will be given in the following slide of this presentation. So when the pilot decides the AP must be switched off at the latest at the missed approach point or minimum use height of the AP whichever occurs first. The FDs may be switched off or kept until landing, depending on the guidance. Let's now review the new procedure applicable to F-Lock F-Glide Slope mode. When you fly an approach using the F-Lock F-Glide Slope mode, and when you reach minimum, if visual references are sufficient, continue announce. Again, it's reminded that below minimum, the visual references must be the primary references until landing. Then, when appropriate, AP off. Remember that there is no condition on the missed approach point in this case. As with the FLS function, there is no mode reversion at the missed approach point the F-Lock F-Glide Slope mode will remain engaged down to the ground. Again, here also, you have a note related to the minimum use height of the AP. Then FD as required, so you can keep the FDs on or switch them off depending on the guidance and on some conditions that I will explain in the following slides. So when pilot decides, the AP must be switched off at the latest at the MUH, so no condition on the missed approach point. The FDs may be switched off or kept until landing. Let's now have a look to the operational benefits that this new procedure can bring. First flexibility for approaches with high minima. Here is an example of an RNAV GNSS approach in LFPT runway 20. And you can see that you have high minima. For high minima, it might be comfortable for the pilot to keep the AP and FDs engaged below minima to have an help to guide the aircraft even if visual references remain the primary references, of course. Another advantage that we see with this new procedure is the flexibility for RNAV RNP approaches, especially with reduced to fixed legs. You have here an example of an RNAV RNP approach, runway 19 in KDCA, where you have below minimum reduced to fixed leg. 
and it's more comfortable to keep the AP and FDs engaged below minimum to perform this radius to fix legs instead of switch the AP and FD at minimum and perform manually this RF leg. Another advantage is that with this new procedure the go around with AP is available below minima. You have also a decorrelation of AP and FD disconnection action from the decision to continue. With the previous procedure, at minimum, you have to take the decision to continue or to go around, and you have to take the action AP off, FDs off, bird on, runway track set. With this new procedure, the disconnection of AP FD is decorrelated from the decision to continue, which makes the approach more comfortable. So we have just reviewed this new procedure that enable to keep the AP and FDs engaged below minimum for non-precision approaches flown with full managed guidance. We have also reviewed the operational benefits that this procedure can bring. Let's now have a review of the conditions of application of this new procedure. The two basic rules to apply this procedure are the following. This procedure is only applicable to full managed guidance. And the second rule is that the AP and FDs must be switched off if the guidance is not relevant or not followed. The conditions of applications are detailed in the Flight Crew Techniques Manual. So the question, when to disconnect AP, once AP is disconnected, can I keep FDs? And if no, when to disconnect FDs? These questions should be discussed during the approach briefing. Let's review in detail this condition. Which guidance mode is used for the approach? You have all these guidance modes available. F-Lock and Light Slope mode, Final APP, APP DES, NAV or Track FPA. If you want to use NAV or Track FPA guidance, you cannot use this procedure. For F-Lock and Light Slope, you can use it. APP DES, you can use it. Final APP, you can use this approach if you have no automatic AP disconnection at minimum minus 50 feet. So how to identify if your aircraft has the automatic AP disconnection at minimum minus 50 feet? You can refer to the aircraft configuration summary table available in the FCOM and in the QRH. You have this item, AP automatic disconnection at minima no, it means that the AP will remain engaged below minimum minus 50 feet. The second point is the design of the approach procedure and the position of the map and the offset between the final leg and the runway track. So we have different scenarios. You can have the map at the runway threshold and the final leg aligned with the runway track. Here is an example of such an approach, an Arnav GNSS in Paris. You have the final approach course 074 and the runway track is 074 and the map is at the runway threshold. It has to be noted that most of the AirNav GNSS approaches are in this configuration. And we can say that AirNav GNSS approaches replace more and more the usual VOR and, and NDB approaches that we had before. It is also the basic design of AirNav RNP approaches. Map at the runway threshold and last leg of the final aligned with the runway track. Another scenario is the map not at the runway threshold, 
but the final leg aligned with the runway track. Here is an example of a VOR DME approach in Shanghai. You have the final approach course 167 degrees and the runway track 167 degrees but the map is at 0.6 nautical miles from the threshold. Another scenario, map at the runway threshold and final leg not aligned with the runway track. Example, VOR DME approach in Orlando, where the final approach course has more than 10 degrees difference with the runway track. But you can see that you have the map at the runway threshold. And the last scenario is map not at the runway threshold and final leg not aligned with the runway track. An example is the VOR runway 20 left in Hanoi, where you have an offset between the final approach course and the runway track of 10 degrees, and you have the missed approach point, which is 1.6 nautical miles from the runway threshold. So we have four scenarios and to decide if we can keep the AP and FDs below minima, we can separate them into two parts. Final leg aligned with the runway track and final leg not aligned with the runway track. When the final leg is aligned with the runway track and you fly an approach using the final APP mode or APP DES, the AP must be switched off at the latest at MUH or the missed approach point, whichever occurs first. For the APP DES case, which is used to fly RNPAR approaches, the map is always at the runway threshold. It means that the condition of AP disconnection is only linked to the minimum use height of the AP. The FD guidance will be also relevant down to the missed approach point. It means that in this case, the pilot can decide to keep AP and FDs engaged below minimum to take benefit of the guidance. For F-Lock F glide slope mode, it's the same. The AP must be switched off at the latest at the MUH. Remember that there is no condition on the missed approach point for f lock f glide slope mode, no mode reversion. And the FD guidance will be relevant down to the runway threshold. Down to the runway threshold because the f lock f glide slope mode do not perform the flare and the autoland. In the right scenario, if you fly an approach using the final APP mode, the AP will have to be switched off at the latest at MUH or missed approach point, whichever occurs first. And the FD guidance will not be relevant from the time we'll have to align the aircraft on the runway. It means that when you, once you have to align the aircraft on the runway, we'll have to switch off the FDs. When you fly an approach using the F-Lock f, -lock, f slope mode, the AP will have to be switched off at the latest at the MUH, but the FD will not be relevant from the time you will align the aircraft on the runway. So depending on this scenario, you can decide to keep AP and FDs engaged below minimum, and even to keep FD engaged down to the ground if the guidance is satisfactory. But if you believe that the guidance is not satisfactory, depending on what you see on the external scene, you have to switch off the FDs. As a conclusion of this presentation, we have seen that we have with the new FMS standard, a full managed guidance, which is available below minimum and the AP 
remains engaged below minimum. We don't have any more this logic to have an automatic AP disconnection at minimum minus 50 feet. We have also updated the minimum use height of the AP in the FCOM and in the AFM. It is now a fixed value, no more linked to the minima. So based on this new FMS standards and this update of the MUH, we have been able to change the procedure of AP and FD disconnection when flying non-precision approach with full managed guidance. So we have this new procedure, which is particularly interesting for another NP approaches with reduced to fixed legs, for approach with high minima, or in case of marginal weather conditions, where the FD guidance might be an help. However, there are some conditions of application of this new procedure. It's only applicable in full managed guidance. It depends on the approach characteristics offset between the final approach leg and the runway track and the position of the missed approach point. And of course, you have to switch off AP and FD if the guidance is not satisfactory or not followed. In any case, remember that below minima, the visual references must be the primary references until landing. So if you lose visual references, you have to go around. Thank you.